In the last lecture, I explained how we can obtain the mathematical representation of signal waveforms following a shortcut method. Now regarding this shortcut method, I want to make one thing very clear. If you remember the last lecture, I told you we use this shortcut method to obtain the mathematical representation of any signal waveform. Mathematical representation of any signal waveform. Now by this I mean the mathematical representation of any signal waveform related to ramp and step. Related to ramp and step. For example, if you have some sinusoidal waveform or some exponentially rising or decaying waveform, you cannot obtain the mathematical representation using the shortcut method we have seen in the last lecture. The signal waveform should be related to ramp and step. And you don't have to worry about the other signal waveforms because in your examination, the signal waveforms are always related to ramp and step. Now in this lecture, we will solve three problems which you can see on your screen. And after solving these three problems, the concept of this mathematical representation will be very much clear because we will see some important points which we have not discussed in the last lecture. So let's start with the problem number one. Here signal is xt having the triangular waveform like this. And as we have seen in the last lecture, we will start from the left side of the signal and we will follow the signal flow like this. So initially signal xt is equal to 0 and when t is equal to minus 2 you can see there is upward turn and for upward turn we take positive sign. Now the next thing is the magnitude of slope. The length of y side is 8 and the length of x side is 2. So 8 by 2 is the magnitude of the slope and the ramp signal will be r inside the bracket t plus 2 because when t is equal to minus 2 the upward turn is taking place and the flow of signal will become like this. This is the new flow of signal. Now important thing in this problem is occurring at t equal to 0. When t is equal to 0 you can see the signal is taking downward turn. The signal is taking downward turn like this. But we cannot have the turn like this because first we need to settle at some constant value. The constant value is 8. So first the signal will settle at constant value 8 like this after taking the downward turn and the flow of the signal will become like this. And as signal is taking downward turn we will take negative sign here. And now the important thing is magnitude of slope. If you see this angle and this angle you will find they are same. So the magnitude of the slope will remain same 8 by 2 and the ramp signal will be RT minus 0. Now after this the signal will take downward turn again and the new flow of the signal will be like this. And for downward turn we will take negative sign. For downward turn we will take negative sign. And the magnitude of the signal we can easily calculate because this angle will be same as this angle alternate interior angles and from here the tan theta of this angle is equal to 8 divided by 4 8 divided by 4 and the ramp signal will be RT minus 0 because again at T equal to 0 the downward turn is taking place. Now we are here and the signal is taking upward turn. So the final flow is like this and for upward turn we have positive sign and the positive sign will be followed by the magnitude of the slope and the magnitude of the slope will be the tan theta of this angle or simply the slope of this line. So we have 8 by 4 the same slope we are having in this case also and the ramp signal will be R T minus 4. So this is what we have obtained after following the shortcut method and now I will simplify this 8 divided by 2 will be 4 so we have 4 R T plus 2 then we have minus 4 R T then we have minus 2 R T plus 2 R T minus 4. We will simplify it further and finally we have 4 R T plus 2 minus 6 RT 
plus 2rt minus 4. So this is our answer, the answer of the first problem. And here we have learned important thing that whenever we have the turn directly from a slope to other slope, we first try to settle down to a constant value. Now let's see what will happen when we try to solve the second problem. In the second problem also we will start from the left side of the signal and we will follow the signal flow. So initially we have xt equal to 0. Now when t is equal to 0 and when t is equal to 4 between this time interval there is upward level switching. There is upward level switching but again you cannot switch to the ramp. You need to switch to a level. That's why we are calling it upward level switching and the level is equal to 4. So there is upward level switching like this and we already know for upward level switching we take positive sign and 4 is the level so we will have 4 here and the step signal will be ut minus 0. Now after this we have the signal flow like this. This is the signal flow and from here the signal is turning upward and the new signal flow is like this. And as the signal is turning upward, we will take positive sign, positive sign and the magnitude of the slope is equal to 16 minus 4, this length here divided by 4. So we have 12 by 4 RT minus 0 because the upward turn is taking place when T is equal to 0. Then the signal is taking a downward turn but again we need to settle down to some constant value a level like this so this is the downward turn and we are settling at 16 and for downward turn we have negative sign and as this angle is same as this angle the magnitude of the slope will remain same as 12 by 4 so 12 by 4 and the ramp signal will be RT minus 4 because at T equal to 4 the downward turn is taking place now the signal is having this flow and it is having a downward level switching like this and then the final flow is like this and for downward level switching we have negative sign and what is the magnitude of the level switching it is 16 so we have 16 and the step signal is equal to u t minus 4 now it is your task to simplify this you can simplify it and have your answer the final answer the mathematical representation of signal xt. Now let's talk about another representation of the signal waveforms in example number 3. In this example we have the signal waveform and we can easily obtain its mathematical representation. I will quickly do it. We will start from the left, follow the signal waveform, xt will be 0 for this and then there is upward turn so we have positive sign. The magnitude of the slope is equal to 2 divided by 1 so the magnitude is 2 and the ramp signal is going to be RT minus 0. So this will be the flow of the signal. And after this we will have a downward turn. And this will be the flow of the signal. For downward turn we will take negative sign. And the magnitude of the slope will remain same. This angle and this angle is same. So the slope is 2. And the ramp signal is RT minus 1. And after this we have downward level switching downward level switching and the final flow of the signal is like this for downward level switching negative sign will be there and the magnitude by which the level switching is taking place is 2 so we have 2 u t minus 1 let's simplify this we will have twice of r t minus twice of r t minus 1 then we have minus twice of u t minus 1 so this is the answer, it's fine, but sometimes in your examinations you will have the options in which only step signals are there, the ramp signals are converted to step signals. So let's see how we can convert the ramp signal to the step signal. So the next step is very important, RT we can write as TUT, so we have twice of TUT minus RT minus 1 we can write as t minus 1 u t minus 1 so we have twice of t minus 1 u t minus 1 and the final term is already step signal so we don't have to do any changes in it it will be 2 u t minus 1 
Now you can simplify the last two terms and you will have something like this twice of t ut and after simplifying these two terms you will have twice of t u t minus 1. Now we can take 2t common from the two terms so the final answer will be 2t inside the bracket ut minus u t minus 1. So the answer can be represented in this form also and it can be represented in this form also. Here you can see there is no ramp signal representation. So whenever your answer is not matching to the options, it is in this form, try to convert it to this form and maybe you have the correct answer. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. From the next lecture, we will start differentiation of signals.